Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid Edging Inventor HSM Pro. Today we're going to cut a three axis part and we're going to go through all the steps from the importing of the part from Solid Edge through simulation. In any case, let us begin. I'm going to open my part. I'm going to accept these defaults. One thing I do like is to see the lines on my part in general, so I'm going to go to Visual Style, Shaded with Edges, go back to Cam. We're going to set the part up now. Press the Shift key, middle mouse button allows you to rotate the part. You don't have to go up to this little silly block thing. Anyway, uh, enter your program number whatever it is, and the description. I'm going to have this cut to a net shape for the stock size, so it's going to be relative size box, no additional stock. And for the orientation of the block, you can see that this is already lined up, so I don't have to go through here and pick the z-axis plane and the rest of that stuff. That's already assigned. Stock point is highlighted. That assigns my XYZ zero for my block. Now let us begin cutting the part. I'll accept this. Today I'm going to do this in real time. So however long it takes to calculate uh, the tool paths and to calculate the simulation of this part is what it's going to take. Now this is a four-year-old computer. It was fast in its day, but it's getting kind of long in the tooth now. Still, it works fine. In any case, we're going to rough this out with adaptive. My tool is going to be, this obviously is number one. The cutter is going to be a, half, a quarter inch bull nose. Whoops. O3 for the corner round. And our RPMs are going to be 10,000. Cutting feed rate of 100. And we'll leave ramp and plunge as they are. OK. Select. I don't need to do anything here. I can accept that just as it comes up. On this particular one, since I'm using a bull nose and I want to make sure I get through the bottom of that cavity, then I'm going to go ahead and put a negative 0.06. Now pay attention to this. This is where you can mess up sometimes with without thinking you just punch in 0.06. If you don't put a negative, it's going to not cut down to the depth you really want it to. And if you see that you have cut short of the bottom of the cavity or the block, this is probably where you've made the mistake. And our tolerance is fine. Minimum cutting radius, since I don't know how deep into these cavities the end mill can go. With that much of a cutting radius, I'll assign a hundredth, which is smaller. We're going to cut it twice the diameter of the end mill. We're going to leave stock because I want something to finish up later. And all of this is fine. We'll accept it. Now technically, I could have cut down to this face using this tool path, but I don't like the finish that the roughing passes make when you're using uh, HSM adaptive. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the face at this time with the horizontal tool path in the 3D strategies. I'm going to use the same end mill. Uh, the same feeds and speeds I can use for this also, since I'm not cutting much material, it'll leave a good finish. 
I don't need to worry about anything here. Now on this particular one, there's some logic to how this is laid out. What are we doing? We're cutting to a surface, okay? We're cutting to a surface. Why don't we just select that particular surface? Manual step over. I want to have a 1.5 or a 0.15 rather. I'd rather make sure that I've got more overlapping on this tool path than is strictly necessary uh, just for the heck of it. And I'm going to assign a tenth tolerance. Okay. Now we have this tool path. This finishes all the horizontal down to the final depth. Uh, next will be hidden under 3D milling, a scallop toolpath. Now, I want you to pay particular attention on the toolpath that's generated with this. This is a true step over. And I could swear this is a new feature because I don't remember it being quite like this in HSM before, and maybe I've just run across it and didn't realize it. But it doesn't matter the slope or the contour of the faces that I'm cutting it's going to have an exact step over and it works on true scallop height. So it is a true XYZ scallop height condition. In any case, we've selected that. We can use the same tool or we can switch over to a quarter inch ball nose, uh, which I would recommend since it's simply going to have a larger radius and we can go ahead and cut a smoother finish with it. So we're going to generate our new tool. And tool number two, you'll see it automatically popped up as a quarter inch ball mill. I don't know whether there's logic built into the program where it recognizes what kind of tool typically would be used next or not, but this seems to happen more often than just serendipity would indicate, so I suspect there is. And here's our cutter. One thing I didn't do on the other quarter inch end mill was the flute length and whatnot. And our shoulder length here is going to be 1.5. Feed and speed. We're going to go with 10,000 again. And we're going to leave it at 60 inches a minute. and it has four flutes. Okay, and select. Now, what do we want to cut? Think about this and the logic behind it. Again, we've already roughed in our part. We've already cut the face of this part in the horizontal areas. So what we want to do is machine the features that are left. So we're going to pick selection once again, tool tips are everywhere. You mouse over it. For the most part, they're accurate. And we're going to have selection. So I'm going to select that, 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 and that. I don't need to select any of this. Uh, it's not relevant. I'm going to cut everything that's inside of that profile so I don't need to worry about slope. Model bottom, since we're using a ball end mill, I want to have minus 0.13 to make sure I get past the radius of that ball mill. I want the tolerance once again to be fairly precise on the step over. We want a good finish, and the step over is just what it means. Basically, they don't have any way of assigning a scallop height in here like some other programs have, so you have to just learn by experience. And, and my guess is that in this case, a 0.005 
is going to give me a really nice finish considering that I'm using a ball end mill. I'm not going to tick stock to leave and I'm not going to tick smoothing again for reasons explained earlier in this video. Everything looks fine there. So let us see what we get. Now earlier I was talking about the nature of the true step over in X, Y, and Z. And you can see in here in the tool path that it creates a condition where irregardless of the slope it is going to give you a consistent and uniform scallop height across the whole part. And you'll find this is true no matter where you go. can see over here we've got slope differentials and it allows for them and it will give you an exact and consistent finish across the whole surface of this thing. Uh, this by the way was the only reason that I had kept my seat of cam works was because of the constant step over and uh, much to my delight when I ran across this scallop pipe tool path last week I realized that I can now do everything that I need to do inside of Inventor HSM. In any case, let's go ahead and run simulation on this whole part. In simulation you have a number of variables that can show you different things and I prefer the toolpath detail. I only want a little bit of the toolpath on there. I don't want it in front of everything. Uh, also, by the way, you can go over here to statistics and whatever you've elected to simulate, it will show you the machining time and the machining distance. And as you can see, this is not all that big of a block. And uh, I've got over 7,000 inches of cutting in there. The step over with the scallop height program is quite small. Info, of course, if you need it. In any case, let's show stock on this. I want this to be the standard because it has at this time more variables. By the way, this is not the way simulation is going to stay. Uh, later this year, they've got some improvements and upgrades to HSM that are going to be pretty darn profound. And one of them is going to be an improvement in this simulation area. I want to show part comparison so when I'm done I can see what kind of discrepancies I've got to deal with. And just because I like the cute metallic appearance I'm going to use material. Once again this is an older computer simulation on this is not all that fast. Uh, to put it in perspective, the HSM has a performance program where you can go and download this thing from their website that will tell you how fast your computer is using their program. I think this was like a 504 and uh, my newer one is uh, slightly over 800. So there's a huge difference in four years worth of computers. I'm going to speed it up as fast as it can go and we're going to let it rip. Looking at the latest Dells, they've got a uh, 
5810 workstation and they're up to a DDR3 I think it's a 2100 and something megahertz actual RAM speed and the processors are faster I have no idea what a good new current model box would do with this particular program but I suspect it would be pretty jaw-dropping. In any case, as you can see, it doesn't require a super-duper computer to work in HSM because this one is most certainly not. To some degree, uh, what I've been told, where you see the faceting in this particular simulation, that is graphics card driven and it is not what is reflected in reality on the part and they do this because it cuts down on the amount of GPU power necessary for you to see a basic simulation on the screen it's a choice I wish they wouldn't have made I'd rather wait for a while and have an accurate rendition than to have a simulation of a simulation but it doesn't take too long Now if you'll notice as the cuts progressing in that cavity you can see the tool path reflecting the actual slope and angle and true distance to travel so that it maintains a uniform scallop height across this part. And of course, Mr. Smiley has to have eyeballs. And there you have it. There you have a part. And this is the show part comparison, which is giving you an idea of what kind of material tolerance we have. So, a three-dimensional part from beginning to end in Inventor Pro HSM. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you found this informative. Have a good day.